Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the editorial director of Low Power High Performance Engineering. I'm here with Piyush Sanchetti, the vice president of marketing at Atrenta. Piyush, when you look out at the industry, what are you seeing as the problems that are starting to crop up? So we see two major changes in the marketplace. One is design complexity. We're seeing designs in the graphics, in cell phones, for smartphones in particular, for tablets, that are pushing the limits on design size and complexity. These, these chips typically have a lot of third-party IPs that are coming together. And so there are, there are challenges associated with just the design size and the amount of IP that's coming on these chips. That's one major vector. The other change that we see in the marketplace is chips that are focusing on consumer markets. Things like image sensors, uh, microcontrollers, specifically for automotive applications, for industrial applications, where it's not so much the size or the complexity of the chip, but the, the time to market. These chips typically have time to market uh, in a matter of a few months or a few quarters, and therefore, uh, it is extremely important for designers to get chips out to, to market faster. So you, you're talking about IP and, and time to market. There's more and more IP going into a design these days than there ever was in the past. How do you make sure it all works? That's a very good question. Uh, integrating IP and making sure that all the pieces of IP are working together is actually a very difficult and challenging task for mo most chip designers. What we are focusing on is the ability to have a common language, if you will, a common standard for quality of all these IPs. Typically, IPs that are coming on SOCs are soft IPs, as in RTL blocks. And it's important that you have a measurable and objective standard for quality and have the means to, to validate them. Things like design quality, things like clock domain crossing, power, testability, and then verification. And you need clear and well-defined criteria to verify that IPs meet your requirements across all of these, these different domains. You know, one of the things that you're talking about here is with IP, you're sort of moving the center of gravity on a design further forward. And a lot of the challenge goes further forward than it did in the past when you were doing a lot of the stuff where you're developing it all yourself. How does that affect what you're doing? So typically in the past, people were able to meet design closure by doing what's typically referred to as sign-off, uh, things that you do uh, at the layout level or the post layout level, where you are looking at things like LVS, DRC, electro migration, IR drop. Those are significant physical phenomena that, that need to be addressed before the chips actually goes into fabrication. For the things that I discussed earlier, what we're seeing is a need to do all of these analyses up in the RTL stage. And what we're focusing on is RTL sign-off, a set of must-pass requirements before the chip actually goes into design implementation. This is the only way to get to design closure and design convergence for the complex and these, these rapid time to market chips that we're seeing. In particular, at 28 nanometers and going into 14, it's, it's almost imperative to, uh, to get these, these phenomena under control at the RTL stage. Because if you don't, the chances of you actually getting your sign off at the layout stage are close to zero. Really what you're doing is you're increasing the level of confidence in your design step by step by step, right? So each step has to have enough confidence so that you can move to the next step. And it, even more than that, they all have to be integrated together. Confidence definitely is a, a key part of, of, of what we're doing. It's also visibility early on, because the earlier you have visibility into all of these characteristics, the better shot you have of actually addressing them before you commit to the next step. And well, like I said before, a lot of these issues can be handled at the implementation stage, but A, you pay the penalty of doing it late, B, you pay the penalty of time lost because anything you have to fix back in RTL requires an iteration. And in the past, these iterations were a few days. Now what we see is for designs those that big, these iterations could be weeks to months. And therefore, it's almost impossible to, to make these changes in a timely fashion if you rely only on back-end or layout-based methods. 
I wonder if we can drill down a little bit into what you're talking about with RTL sign-up. What exactly is that? I mean, we understand things like DRC and LBS, but what exactly is RTL sign-off? So RTL sign-off is very similar to LBS DRC, which are a must-pass set of requirements before you go into fabrication. It's the same concept applied to various different domains. So to, be, to specifically answer your question, things like design linting, clock domain crossing, power, power intent, things like CPF or UPF, uh, testability, uh, verification. These are all aspects that people typically do design exploration at the RTL stage with, but up until now there haven't been very clear sign-off criteria defined for all of these. So that's when we say RTL sign-off, what we mean is a set of requirements across these domains that you can analyze, verify, and eventually pass a, a, a clearly documented set of requirements before you take the next step of getting into synthesis, place, and route. If you do document all these things, if you, if you do go through all the way through that list, do you save time in the design cycle and can you actually save money as a result of that? That indeed is ultimately the true test of RTL sign-off. You absolutely are able to save time because if you didn't do the RTL sign-off, there's a good chance you will detect these issues as you get into implementation. But now you are reacting to, to potential surprises and, and things that are not necessarily within spec for the design. So you're absolutely saving time in, in the fact that you are predicting and finding these things before you get into implementation. As to your point about savings in cost, um, the way to think about it is if any of these issues were, um, were to make it into silicon, you are potentially looking at a, a respin. And we all know the cost of a, a, a mask respin or even a, a metal respin in these days can be significant. So really being able to analyze and sign off these important criteria at the RTL stage, you're saving time in implementation, the iterations that may come out of implementation, and eventually you're minimizing your silicon risk. And the complex equation that goes with that, obviously, is if you can save time on the front end by doing something like this, you also can save time on the back end, or you can put more into the back end so that you get much higher confidence of your design going out the door, right? Both excellent points. Um, by optimizing the design, by making sure that your design meets the, the specs at the RTL stage, you have a starting point for implementation that's a lot better than, you know, going into implementation and then finding out if the design is within spec or not. So you, you definitely save time and money uh, on the number of cycles that you spend on implementation tools. The second point I think is, is more important in that often when you rely more on physical implementation tools, you, you typically run out of time on design closure. And as a result, you, you leave certain exploration aspects on the table. By doing more of the exploration at RTL, you're able to get more out of your design before you commit into implementation. So yes, uh, by doing RTL sign-off, you are saving on implementation effort and in the, the, the time spent in implementation tools, but you're also able to get more out of your design by exploring the limits longer and more than you otherwise would. You know, when we think about all this complexity, we tend to think of it only at the latest process node, but when a lot of the stuff is also starting to filter back, right? Mainstream is now moving down to probably 65, 40 nanometers, and they're starting to encounter some of the same issues as people were encountering at the most advanced uh, parts of Moore's Law. So how does this stuff apply back to that, which is probably the, the basis of things like the Internet of Things, the infotainment systems in cars, and a variety of new applications that we haven't even thought of yet? Indeed. So this is not merely about very complex designs, uh, you know, uh, Internet of Things, general connectivity, uh, like I mentioned earlier, industrial applications. Microcontrollers are ubiquitous. Uh, these days a typical car can have a few hundred microcontrollers in it. So yes, it's not just merely about complexity, but it's about being able to turn uh, 
you know, turn around very quick iterations or quick derivatives on these chips. So uh, we've seen chips that have a life cycle of no more than three months. And in order to do uh, a, a chip, complete chip in three months, what you have to be able to do is get the design spec firmed up at RTL, back to RTL sign off, before you get into implementation because you cannot, in those types of applications, you cannot afford to do multiple turns of implementation. Piyush Sanchetti, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate the opportunity to, to discuss this important topic for the industry and for, for Atrenta.